Los Morales from Black Feminine TV talking to Layla Westbrook regarding Sweet Life Los Angeles. It finally mm -hmm. aired all of nine episodes quicker than we expected, <laughs> you know? Um, yes. So talk to me, let's go back for those who probably haven't seen the show or wanted to get some insight regarding the show. There've been a lot of reality shows obviously on television. What was the yeah. thought process in putting together this show? Um, a lot of reality shows in the pike. I've worked on quite a few over my span of my career. And I think that a lot of the takeaway that I've gotten from you know, I go all the way old school back to real world and road rules when that was like the only doc series on the, on the channel at the time. Um, I think my biggest takeaway from every show that I've ever done is really allowing a safe presence and path and environment so that the cast can tell their truth and be themselves, their organic selves and not feel um, and almost forget that those big cameras and crews are there. Uh, and that takes a while, but it, it, the, a lot of it is just really building up a trust environment, trustful environment so that they can just be themselves because they're entertaining on their own. They don't need my hand. My hand needs to be in the space of like allowing them to just be themselves. So that was first and foremost, I wrote a whole damn manifesto about producing before we even got started on the creative. Mm -hmm. And so now you have this show, and like you said, you know, you've been around the block plenty of times to see what yeah. works, what doesn't work, what's the pitfalls, and then specifically with a Black reality show, you know? Of course. And uh, see, I saw that you did college interns, and so you know how to deal with a young Black audience, you know? So um, when you're putting together this group of people, yeah. What was the mindset like? What what was the 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 plan as far as showcasing their slice of life? Well, I would say, you know, there were a couple things that were in play. First of all, this group of friends is a group of friends. They are not, you know, piecemealed from you know a bunch of different areas and you've put together because of the, the most dynamic people of like a bunch of subgroups. This is the group. So right there in and of itself, they were golden. We were golden right out the gate. And it was just really finding all of their individual stories and how they interconnected so that we could get a full slice of life of their lives as friends and as individuals. Um, and then, you know, just kind of secondarily, I think it was uh, the mandate that has been from the get-go was we had an eighth cast member, which was South LA. And really showcasing South LA, not as a singular entity, but the communities within South LA. If anybody's from South LA, I would be annoyed too if everybody's like, oh, okay, South LA, just this entire lumping of uh, Watts is different from Compton, Compton is different from Ladera Heights, Englewood, Gardena, like all of those neighborhoods have their own distinct flavor, but live within that, re that residence of South LA. And we wanted to do right by those communities. And because those are the communities from which they were raised. That is who shaped them to be who they are and why they're so watchable. Mm -hmm. Now with the characters, or not characters, with the actors, with the, with the cast, <laughs> with the cast that you have, not characters, not actors, with the cast that you have, and, and you know, and you're, show, and you're shooting them, you know, um, as a producer, I'm, not, I'm, not, you know, I'm saying to myself, like, as you're watching the dailies and so forth, you know, do you have and you and your team plan like what's the narrative for the next episodes? Like, granted, you're shooting them and they're all comfortable being uh, being filmed. You know, is there a point where you say, OK, we can't show this or like, how does that work as far as what the next plot is? You know, when, you know, if you're watching episode for episode, you say like what's going to be on the next, you know, like that trailer sequence. You're like, you're wondering where are we going with these characters? A hundred percent. There's always a plan. You have to have a plan when you go out, you know, even like just a straight doc, you have to have a plan when you go out because otherwise you're just shooting into thin air with no kind of real purpose and, and not, um, and not like a clear through line for the collective and individual stories that I just kind of spoke on. Um, I think what for us was the plan was initially and, and always organically starts with the individual. We spent a lot of time talking over and over and over. Like the story with Thailand's dad came at the tail end of maybe a, a two hour chat about different things when I asked her, 
what is it that's motivating you to be? Because I was like, you are so ambitious and smart and hungry. And, th and then that whole kind of narrative about like, I need to legacy build because I need to provide for my dad when he gets out of jail the way he provided for me um, when and what landed him in jail in the first place. And I was like, girl, you can't drop that on me at the end of a conversation because I was like, that's a whole nother creative narrative that one has not been told in the doc series space. Like what the effects of, regardless of what actions led the person individual to the penal system, the impact, this is what happens to the people on the outside when that person goes in. So right away we were like, bing, bing, bing. We need to tell this story because not every family crumbles. Um, she's had challenges, her mom, and you see the honesty in what, you know, again, providing her mom, providing an environment for her to emote the guilt that she felt for Ty not having a hands-on dad. But look at Ty, she is surviving and thriving. So a long way of saying is that every story begins with the individual. We just spent a lot of time talking, 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 so that we can then map out how do we now get these stories onto the screen. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, Ty is not obviously, you know, you focus on a lot of the individuals and then we see a lot of Ty uh, and then yeah. you see like, okay, we're, there's always conflicts in these shows, you know, and I always wonder, like, I, I say to myself, you know, I'm, kind of, I, you know, I'm a little bit older and I'm like, I've never had that sort of drama with my boys. You know what right. And everybody feels, everybody has their different crew or whatever the situation may be. Sure. And it's sort of like, okay, wh where are we going with this? And then um, as you're shooting, does, does did anything change, you know, as far as while you got to episode six or seven, you know, as you were breaking it down, as far as where do you want to go? Because you mentioned the, the dad scene, you know, which is totally offset. That's one particular instance that does, you know, we don't see it further on. You just focus on it right then, you know, and then you've had uh, uh, Jordan, I think, and his family, I'm not sure, after a while you lose her, <laughs> who's who. Yeah. Um, is there a frame of reference as far as what the next step was going to be? And then how do you end it off? You know, like, where do we go from here? Well, I'll, I'll answer that because uh, you're talking about the pivot. We talk about the pivot all the time. It's like, there's always some sort, like we said, we have a map and a trajectory and I'll give you an example. Our finale, our, our final episodes, I would say eight episodes eight and nine, um, if you haven't seen it, goes from the podcast, which was always a plan. That was that what had been day one plan that, you know, this is something that Gerald does. He wants it, you know, and he was using that as a platform to talk about mental health, black men and mental health and providing. Now what begat from that was the pivot because then the um, conversation between Jordan and Jay that then moved into Ty and Gerald's relationship. No one saw that coming. Like that was the pivot because then that bled into what is happening with this friend group. And we left it, you know, open-ended. We don't know what's happening with their relationship. Um, and so that is when you talk about that kind of the switch up, is it planned all the way through? No, you've got to be prepared for the pivot because then you're not stepping in the actual truth of their lives. If I'm like, that's great, but you know, we've got this thing planned already then that's not, that's me telling their stories and not them telling their story. Mm -hmm. How are the individuals now? You know, obviously you shot this sometime back. It's now aired, you know, uh, you know, how are they now? You know, people always wonder like, is this what we're, uh, do we, if we met them out there, are we getting the same people we, we just saw on TV? 100%. We also just uh, shot a um, we're not calling it a traditional reunion show like you see on the, you know, the other channels, but we did kind of have a, what we're calling a group chat because that's what they, they, they have their group chats. That's how they communicate. Uh, we're bringing them back to just kind of decompress the season. So you will see that coming up. Um, but they are, I have been checking in with them regularly, even just all the, you know, people with Becky and Candace and all of them, just because that's my way as a producer too. I don't just go, okay, thank you so much. Y'all got this, see you later. You know, this is a lot for them. Um, they're still, if we keep in mind, they're still in their young twenties. Like this is a lot to process. It's a lot of voices coming at you. Like, you know, 
even if somebody wasn't in at their absolute, you know, excellence best at that moment, I dare to challenge anybody who had does not have a story of their youth, but doesn't have cameras at that moment filming everything that they do. But I'm so proud of them because they are really leaning on that core group of friendship that they have that we're watching to help one another out. And, you know, obviously we're living in an age of social media, whereas back then when you initially started out, there was not that. Now, exactly. people watch these episodes, you know, in regards to mental health, they got to learn how to stay away from social media because you never know who's liked, who's not liked, you know, and people are like, yo, what's up with homegirl, yada, 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 exactly. you know, it's like, hey, why are they sliding with this, you know, and, and you know, who, who's getting, uh, who's being favored and who's not, you know, and that can yeah. work to somebody's mind to say, so like, you know, do we like these characters? You know, do we do we like these people, individuals? Like, and I understand you checking in with them because you never know how episodes play out and what's the next thing people are saying on social media. How do they respond knowing that obviously they shot that some time back, but people are now seeing it now. Exactly, exactly. And, and interesting you said that because there it was, I have those words that came out of my mouth. I was like, stay off of social media, but that, I'm. I might as well be talking to the air because this generation lives on social, right? So for me to say stay off of social makes absolutely no sense to them. They're like, okay, Leo, you know. Uh, but also we use that, I would say, application of presence on social in the series. As you see, we've mixed those videos. We were just, I remember sitting there, I was just like, this generation lives on social media. They will say their honest gut reaction to a camera before you might not actually even say it to your friend's face. Um, and I, I, I seriously love how it has been applied in the series as another lens into their universe. <laughs> it's my favorite now, part. <laughs> now, as obviously as a producer and you've done this, you know, what have you learned throughout this series that has made you grown as you go on to do the next project you know like what did you yeah. pick up throughout this whole time yeah. doing it after doing it like reading all the commentary you know like why the who what when absolutely um i 100 percent trust my gut i think you know there's a lot of of procedures and um and totally just thinking of, of things that uh, over the years I'm like god I wish I could have been able to you know and one thing that I will say you know when I first started interfacing with HBO about what the plan is I love the fact that they said to me what is there something that you've always wanted to do but the network wouldn't got in the way and you know every producer will tell you just like oh there's too many people there's too many chefs in the kitchen and they literally were just like have at it have at it you know, you know, make a good show. And I think that this has been such a, a refreshing process for me as a producer, because I've been, there's been over the years, like even just the, the projects that I love, I'm like, God, I wish I could have been able to just let the cast breathe and just, you know, sit in their space. There's so much that we, is on the cutting room floor because everything was that good. It was like, okay, providing a safe environment for them to be able to speak their truth and feel safe to just emote and not give the PR version of themselves because nobody wants to see that. Nobody believes perfection. I said that from the beginning. I was like, don't, don't come with that. I'm perfect and nothing ever goes wrong. That was not a license for you to act, you know, act up if that's not who you are, but it was don't bring a false sense of self was what the meaning was because mm -hmm. people will see right through it. Obviously, you know, when this series got announced, you know, Issa's name is attached to it. And, you know, that got a lot of people interested because, like I said, there's a lot of shows out there. It's like, what's going to get people to watch this show outside of the ones that's on We TV and this TV and that TV exactly. and so forth, you know? Exactly. So, uh, what was the nature, obviously, and you working with her to, to have it greenlit to the point where, like, oh, okay, you know, we need a startup, you know, we need something that's going to say, okay, check this out. A hundred percent. I think the blueprint. For, for all of us, it was like we were all big fans of Baldwin Hills when that came out. And, you know, um, one of the creators of that series is also on this project as well. And it was just really, we were all like-minded in the sense that, you know, that was kind of 
the inspiration, we, not to copy it, not to take it that and make it Baldwin Hills 2.0, which I love, but that was actually some of my favorite comments when people are just like, this feels like Baldwin Hills 2.0, but grown up. Um, but really kind of take that lens from which, because I felt like that that was a series that really showed a slice of young black life that we had not seen yet. And so that was then the mandate to me was to take it, take that lens and really truly show it the way that these kids grow up. Something that, that not only will they individually recognize the community from which they grew up, but other people who still live there. Like I was like, I wanna be able to walk through the streets um, of any of those communities and not have them go, girl, now you know damn well you didn't show the way my neighborhood, the way it actually is. It was like, tell the truth, show how it is. Like, really put a proper lens on South LA. And I'm so, I, I love the way that it looks because I love that I feel like it feels like community, it feels like home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I purposely didn't want to mention anybody's name because I don't want to single anyone out because it's like, it's, it's a whole group of people who don't want to say, oh, this person and that person is like, no. But obviously when people watch this, there are certain yeah. individuals that they're going to talk about and they have more play than the others. You know, and, and you know, you you make sure everybody gets their shine, like, especially when you talk, when you see the guys, you know, in episode eight, you yeah. know, like, oh, now the guys are arguing amongst each other. <laughs> and we're like, I'm saying, well, that hasn't happened with my boys. <laughs> you know, right, somebody right. has, you know, everybody has their thing, you know. Um, the thing about any series is, and I don't know if it's been announced or not, are we going to get a second season with this, with these individuals? Because I think it's sometimes if it's, if it's one and done, it's like, okay. You know, right. that's it. You know, we've seen Harlem Heights. You know, it's like, it's sort of like, so you, you you want it to be known. You know, at the end of the day, it's like Baldwin Hills stood out because of its name. I mean, if you ask me, I don't remember anybody from Baldwin Hills. I remember the title. I remember Harlem Heights. You know what I'm saying? Like, you remember the title, but you don't remember anybody else. Only if it goes further on, like some of these other shows have gone. When they go further on, then you become invested in the individuals. You know, so like, Absolutely. is there... Is, are you planning as a producer, like, you know, obviously I don't know if you got the call or not to see what the next step ahead is, you know, like where we can go. Say it loud, say it proud. We, we're, we're all on pins and needles. We're waiting to hear. We love the fact that it is being well received. And even the, because look, I know you got to take the bitter with the sweet, right? So even the criticisms that have come through are valid. Like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Every opinion matters. Okay, I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna walk that back a little bit. Not every opinion <laughs> matters, but like constructive opinions matter. Um, and we're we're just on pins and needles right now, waiting to hear. We're keeping prayers up on it. Um, but we love that. You know, I feel like that is being well received uh, by all audiences. And so hopefully soon we'll hear. Um, but yes, my brain's already planning. My brain is already, and I've even told that you know, the, and I. As you're saying cast, I'm saying kids because I'm like, they're not kids. But <laughs> I like, but even with them, when I'm checking in with them, I was like, just start thinking about the future. Start thinking. I was like, take a journal. I literally told them, I was like, grab a journal, start writing in it every day um, of moments of that's going, what is how your life is changing right now so that we can reflect that, that if we're blessed with a season two, that we're at the ready, that we're not starting at the, okay, you guys are ready. Like, we're like, here we are. Here's where we're gonna go. Here's our blueprint. So my brain is already at season three. <laughs> you know, b before I end off, just gonna backtrack a little bit. Was there any part during the production where you said to yourself, maybe your team said, or maybe one of the uh, individuals said, can we not show this? It doesn't paint me in a good light, you know, or so forth. Um. I think every show I've ever done, that moment has come and it's usually come from a moment where the person has really authentically been themselves. And, you know, you, you feel like, I mean, I would say even a lighter note where it's in the series where Gerald's dad's like, tell him to cut that part. You know, like that's a lighter note of that. But I think even in a, in a heavier space, yeah, of course that, that happens, but then you, t and I, but I, as if I feel like that is a something that is relevatory towards that person's trajectory, um, then it is important to kind of talk it through. Like I, again, my, my producing style is I don't shoot it and then 
you know, and then I, I step off. Like I'm through, if, if I know that there's something, a particularly story or moment that might be tough for the person to ingest publicly, I sit down with you, we talk it through it. We, you know, so that you are right with it because here's the thing is at the end of the day, you, you have to own you and you have to own everything you say. And we're not perfect every sec, single second of the moment. But if you attach shame to it, then you're validating everybody coming at you just going, you know, you effed up, blah, blah, blah. And if you are shameful for it, then, then you know, it's like, then we, we, we've got bigger issues or you have bigger issues that you need to, to work through. And so, and, and, you know, and just to really, as you were saying, like with your friends, like you get, you know, you guys don't always like beef like that. A lot of times with these shows is you're in conversation pieces longer than you normally would in real life. Cause like, sometimes if your boy's acting up, you're just like, okay, I'm gonna catch you tomorrow. And you just kind of squash it right then and there here in this environment you're in conversation a lot longer so there's a lot more room for unpacking things and and i and i'm all about resolutions too it's like don't let it all sit on don't leave it on the table like get it all get it all out unpack it all and make sure that you're heard before you get up from the table very last question where does the love for these shows come from like what's kept you going to keep producing these type of series you know, uh, it's, it, again, I've been so blessed with, like, I've been doing, I did all the making of bands with Diddy. Like that was seven years of that. Like that, to me, I stop and I look back at those moments, no matter, and, and if anybody works in production, I'll tell you, this is not an easy life. It's hard. You know, it's like, it physically is hard. It's emotionally hard. You're away from home and all those things. But I love the fact that at the end of the day, I look at the people that have chosen to open up their lives when the when things wonderful things happen to them after that that they've been able to have their wish come true like I've wanted to be a model or I've wanted to be a performer and that begets this moment begets that for them that makes me feel good like okay I now have a living man, uh, like a living marker of the kind of work that I've done, but it's really the person, the person has been uplifted and been able to take the dream that they've had and bring it to life. Well, it's been a pleasure to get your insight regarding this show. Obviously, you know, people have been watching it. It's been on HBO Max, a lot more viewership. You know, uh, people have been riding up and down, obviously through social media, seeing these individuals do what they do. And uh, let's hope we get a season two because otherwise it's like, all right, it's just one season. If you get a season two, like, okay, <laughs> let's, see where, let's see where they've evolved to see like, where are they now? Four months later, six months later, however it may be, I'm sure you know what you're doing. And, uh, you know, we'll be happy to promote and keep it going. So wherever you're at, stay safe. And then we'll talk down the road. Thank you. Same to Take you. Care. Blessings. Bye. Bye.